What everybody wants yeah. in the country now is clarity. They want clarity. What we're not mm. getting from Labour is any clarity. It sounds like you basically, you want every pie covered, right? Every eventuality, <laughs> you've got a position. Not at all. But is it, well, isn't the truth mm. in? The truth is that your <laughs> membership are gagging for you as a party to have a second referendum. They want to overturn Brexit. However, the problem for Labour is the membership doesn't reflect what your voters want. A much, much higher percentage of Labour voters do not want a second referendum. How do you, how do you deal with that problem, where the membership where you are well, are yeah. all blindly going one way, but the voters <laughs> in many Labour heartlands do not want you to go there? The situation is this. Of course, we've got a range of views within the party. And what do we do in the, in the Labour Party? We have a range of views. We get together and we try and hammer out a compromise and a way forward. And that's, I think that's what will happen in the country overall as well. So the vast majority of our members in the composite meeting last night, and we put to conference, there'll be a proper debate. It might be a bit rumbustious, but that's good politics, and I love it in the party for that. What will come out of that is the overwhelming view is actually, if there is to be a people's vote, it should be a general election. But we'll see what Theresa May comes back with from Brussels, first of all. We'll match it against the test. And as I said, the key test is, does it protect the economy and jobs? If not, we won't vote for it. And then we'll say to the Prime Minister, we should have a general election. If we can't get that, yes, we'll keep the people's vote on the, on the table itself, and that could be one of the options we arrive at. Now, it looks as though now, from the, what I hear from the meetings that have taken place last night, what will be put to the floor of the, house, uh, the, floor of the conference will be exactly that proposal, and we'll get so consensus. So just to clarify, just to clarify this then, if Theresa May comes back with her final deal on the table, and you don't like it as a party and you vote against it... And why would you right? like it? ..and she loses, what you're saying is if she doesn't then in that eventuality call a general election, then you will demand a second referendum. Yeah. We'll keep the option of a people's vote on the table and that will be a referendum on the deal itself, obviously, but my view is this, and I've said this time and time again, I want a general election. I think the vast majority of our members do as well, and our supporters do, because at a general election, you debate the issue in a wider range of issues, but you also choose the team. And the problem we've got at the moment is that the team that are negotiating on our behalf, the Conservative team, well, they're not very good. They've wasted two years. They're not coming up with a deal that's acceptable, I don't think, even within their own party. Certainly won't be acceptable in, in the House of yeah. Commons, I don't think, and even in the country. OK. So just move aside and let us get on with it. Uh, in March, Owen Smith, the Shadow Northern Ireland Secretary, was yeah. sacked by Jeremy Corbyn for suggesting... Uh, that there should be a second referendum. Uh, in the summer, we interviewed Jeremy Corbyn here on Good Evening Britain, and this is what he said. Well, I say a referendum took place. It was a single-question referendum. A result was delivered. I campaigned for a different result. We didn't get it. You have to respect the result of that referendum. And it was a, a challenge, if you like, to Parliament and to the politicians. You've now got to deliver something. And I've spent a lot of time uh, talking to fellow Labour and Socialist leaders around Europe in order to build that Shouldn't relationship with Putin. Party. So, how does a second vote respect the result of the referendum? Because we'd be saying we respect the result of the referendum... But you're but running it again. A, a people's vote... If, no, no, wait a minute. We'd have a people's vote on the deal itself. That would open up the wider debate about exactly, not just, I think, the deal, but also I think it would open up the opportunity of saying, here's the type of relationship we have with Europe, we want with Europe, go back and try and negotiate that. As I say, I'd much prefer a general election. Yeah. I think these Conservatives should be held to account for the last two years that they've wasted the reckless way that they've right, treated if you the were economy to win, and the, these if you negotiations, were to win, the jobs at threat. If, you, if there was a general yeah. election, and there could well be uh, before the end of the year, the way things are going, if there is one and Labour wins, Anything you've happen. given a big interview today, I think, in the mirror, in which you, you're very bullish about uh, how the country, you're ready, you're ready to lead, you're ready to, to put this country right. So let me ask you this. One of the biggest questions facing this country right now is our security, particularly post-Brexit, when we may not have the same reliance on European unions as we've had before. Your position on the, the Trident nuclear missile system, what is it now? What is Labour's position on that? 
Labour's policy is to support the continuation on a, of a nuclear deterrent, and that's it. it you know I've campaigned against that, but I'm a Democrat. I accept the democratic wishes of our party. It's been overwhelmingly decided that way. It was in our last manifesto, and that's the policy we're adhering okay, so to. You, you, you and Jeremy Corbyn both have that view. So just to clarify, you would never use a nuclear weapon. Is that right? N no, that's right. I've made that clear. Right. So the leader and the deputy leader of the Labour Party, if you were now in power, which could be by Christmas, you would never actually use our nuclear deterrent? Well, it would be a decision when we're in government, of course, by who's in government, our shadow cabinet, that would then become the cabinet itself. You've, I've expressed my personal views, but you know I've explained what party policy is, we maintain the nuclear deterrent, and that's it. That was in our manifesto at the last election, it will almost certainly be in our manifesto why, at the next why election. Would La why would Labour, that is so exercised about the painful waste of money by the Conservatives, want to sign up to £100 billion of renewing a system that the leadership does never intend using, therefore, well, therefore rendering the well, deterrent... or therefore rendering the deterrent aspect of it completely redundant and leaving us, in many people's well, eyes, weak and open to attack? Well, I've given... I don't... I don't think it does. That's a different argument. I'm happy to come on at a later date to talk about nuclear weapons, etc. But that's my personal view. The, the view of a Labour government would be that Trident is maintained and as a nuclear deterrent. That's the policy we had in our last manifesto. I didn't support. I didn't support in the debate. I went the other way, but I lost the debate. So I'm a Democrat. I accept that. So that's our, what will happen, I'm sure, in yeah, our but, next manifesto. But if I'm going to vote for you in November, say, in this election, it seems to be very mm. important, doesn't it? We've just come under attack on British. Mainland. Well, you've heard, just heard, well, well, you just heard. No, you just heard our policy. No, no, I'm coming you've to that. You heard our policy. Let me, let me finish. The new... <laughs> let me finish. Well, well, on, I don't really on, find it. I don't find on. this particularly amusing. This subject matter, given that we've just had no, a British, no. we've had a British subject assassinated it, on British soil, right? Please, please, inadvertently please, by look. by Russian state activists, right? Russia is a nuclear please. power. There, it is not beyond the realms of fantasy, yeah. given what's been going on with Vladimir Putin and these attacks on British soil, that this could escalate at some stage, and they are a fully-fledged nuclear power. It would be very interesting, I think, to our viewers and to me to know if they're going to vote for Labour in this general election that you're talking about, to know actually what the party would do right. with our nuclear defence system. P OK. Piers, I was smiling because your interviews, actually, it's usually a monologue from yourself rather than the interviewee responding. That's why I was smiling. Don't think I don't take the threat and Novichok what happened seriously. And if you look at what I said during that time, I was one of those people who were saying, actually, the government hasn't gone far enough. We should be using hardline sanctions, financial sanctions, to hit the the Russians have perpetrated this and in the pocket and the government hasn't done that effectively and if you look at my record on that it is straightforward. Let's be very very clear the Labour Party policy in the last manifesto is to maintain the nuclear deterrent. I lost the debate in that but I'm a Democrat and I accept the policy that we advocated in the last election. Yeah but if you're Vladimir Putin, if you're Vladimir then, Putin watching this interview You've now got the leader of the Labour Party. You'll know Labour Party policy. Well, you have no, the, lead, you have the leader of the party. You have the leader of the party and the deputy leader both categorically ruling out ever using our nuclear deterrent. And I think voters are entitled to some, to some truth about this. Isn't the truth that Labour, if it gets into power, has absolutely no desire whatsoever to ever defend this country with nuclear weapons, rendering the 100 billion Trident system completely redundant and allowing people like Vladimir Putin to believe that if Labour was in power, this country would be defenceless against a nuclear power because it wouldn't use nuclear weapons to defend itself. I wonder if we could do a word count at some stage about how many words you use as against the interview. Why don't you just give a straight because answer? This isn't... In, this isn't this, well, I'll tell you a straight answer. It's Labour Party policy, isn't it, Piers, that was in the last manifesto that we maintain the nuclear deterrent. Full stop. It will be a decision of the government in the future when the Labour government comes to power about how and if that was ever used. I've expressed my own personal view, and I repeat, I lost that debate, so democracy prevails, and that will be the policy of the, of the government itself. That's the policy, full stop.